Welcome. Uh, my name is Michael Hauder from Neuss in Germany, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to this uh, symposium entitled Pushing Boundaries in Tricuspid Therapy, the Trick Valve Solution, a session that is sponsored by Orbis Niche PNF. So let me give you some, some introduction to the topic. Um, potentially you're aware of that the tricuspid valve disease is a bit of forgotten disease. And uh, nevertheless, we have to appreciate that, for example, in the US, 1.6 million patients have related issues to that disease requiring treatment. And very frequently, also left-sided valvular disease is accompanied by tricuspid regurgitation. And a lot of these patients require urgent or immediate medical treatment. Nevertheless, also when you look to Europe, almost 800,000 elderly patients are contraindicated for valve surgery in the presence of their disease due to high operative risk and technical contraindications. So with these in mind, there is a significant demand for catheter-based treatment options to address tricuspid regurgitation. Now, there are several technologies being developed over the last years that address the treatment of TR. And as you can see here, you can separate them into uh, annuloplasty devices, devices that uh, repair or coaptation, improve coaptation, and then devices which include valve replacement, either heterotopic or autotopic. And today we will solely focus our attention to the uh, trick valve device. Now, briefly showing you one slide of that device but that will be the core of our symposium here. It is a catheter-based bicaval implant of two valves. By doing so, you avoid backflow and reduce congestion, and thereby you improve and promote re uh, right ventricular remodeling and increase cardiac output. Clinically, this is then translated into a reduction of symptoms and also a reduction of mortality. Now, the objectives of this symposium here are to learn about a new treatment strategy with that trick valve, bicaval valve system for patients suffering from severe tricuspid regurgitation. Second, to understand how this novel device can be an alternative option to the conventional treatment, which is just medication at the moment, and to obtain insights into real life case scenario, which we are going to present to you. With this in mind, it's my pleasure to hand over now to Dr. Asmi Mortgazi, who will give us a presentation of the device itself and an overview of the available clinical data. Asmi, please go ahead. Thank you, Prof. Howdy, for the introduction. And it is my honor to present the latest technology in tricuspid valve therapy, trick valve, and its preliminary clinical data. These are my disclosures. Trick valve is a bicuval valve, one valve in the superior vena cava, and the second valve is in the inferior vena cava. It is a self expandable valve, and the frame is made from nitinol, which gives it a very high frame strength. It is a preloaded valve using bovine pericardium with a dry tissue technology, dehydration and anti-calcification treatment. It is ready to use, making it safe and less preparation is needed when handling the valve during the implantation process. The valve has two different designs. In the left is for the IVC with a double funnel structure and a short skirt to prevent hepatic vein occlusion. In the right is for SVC, it has a crown that anchor it in the confluence of the brachiocephalic vein and a belly that anchors it in the SVC. It has a long skirt to prevent paravalvular leak. The valve comes in several sizes that can fit in the IVC and SVC, but accurate measurement of cable diameter and length by CT scan 
is necessary during the pre-assessment. This bicurval valve is for patients with hemodynamically significant tricuspid insufficiency with presence of keval backflow, which must be detected during screening with the right heart catheterization. The concept is to reduce backflow into the keval and reduce congestion. This will promote RV remodeling and increase cardiac output, which translate into improving in heart failure symptoms and reduction in mortality. They are intended for patients deemed high risk for conventional tricuspid valve surgery. The procedure is done through transfemoral vein access. The time taken to implant the two valves is roughly about 30 minutes, and the implantation is similar to deploying a self-expanding stent. Imaging is using fluoroscopy, and it is optional to use a transthoracic echocardiogram or a transesophageal echocardiogram for an accurate positioning of the deployment of the valve. The patient can be under general anesthesia or local anesthesia. Also to note that the trick, trick valve system does not touch the native valve. I would like to present the preliminary clinical data on trick valve. First is a special access program for compassionate use, which was conducted all over the world. This program is because there were no alternative therapy for such patients with severe tricuspid regurgitation. Trickers first in human study was done in Lithuania with a specific protocol. The enrollment was completed with nine patients more than a year ago. Trickers Euro has also completed enrollment in Spain and Austria with a total of 35 patients. On behalf of the Trickers and Trickers Euro investigator, I would like to present the preliminary data. This is the baseline characteristics as we expected most are in the older age group with a mean age of 75 and 76 years old. And there are a high proportion of patients with atrial fibrillation, more than 90%. There is also a high proportion of patients with renal insufficiency. And most importantly to note that in both trials, more than half of the patients has had prior valve surgery. In terms of the procedural results, there were no reported mortality, no stroke or TIA. There is a one valve migration in the early feasibility trial, which led to a surgical correction and one migration, which the valve was stable, not requiring surgery correction. Otherwise, there were no other major adverse events. The mean length of stay is nine days. Three patients in this cohort were done under local anesthesia and under transthoracic echocardiogram guidance. In terms of the positive hemodynamic changes were noted comparing the pre and post valve implantation. And the results showed a significant reduction in the Doppler backflow in the hepatic vein and significant reduction in the IVC V wave measured during the right heart catheterization. As for functional outcome, as we expected in this cohort of patients, most of them were in functional class three and four pre-procedure. And after six months, of bicaval valve implantation, there was improvement in the functional status with a significant reduction in NYHA class were observed. Improvement in the functional status also seen in the improvement in the six minute walk test and a KCCQ 12 overall score. score. Remodeling of the RV uh, was observed after treatment with trick valve. It is noted that at six months, there is a reduction of right ventricular size diameter in both basal and mid-ventricular. This is an example of a CT scan of a patient pre and post bicable valve implantation. The follow-up CT scan showed up to 50% reduction of the right ventricular volume, which may result in the improvement of the functional status and quality of life. So in conclusion, trick valve system is a new, promising and less invasive concept for the treatment of tricuspid regurgitation. The success and uninventful initial experience showed the feasibility of applying this new therapy in patients with severe tricuspid regurgitation. Trick valve was associated with a significant improvement in functional status, quality of life, and hemodynamics at six months follow-up, and the confirmation of the results in a larger number of patients and at a larger follow-up may open up a new avenue for the treatment of tricuspid regurgitation. With that, thank you very much. 
Thank you very much, Azmi, for this overview. Now I'd like to welcome Dr. Edgar Tay, who is going to present to us our live recording center. Edgar, please. So thank you very much, Michael. Um, as you've heard from ASME, this is a very exciting technology and it's been used now to treat patients who are really very sick uh, and have very little options in terms of surgery because a lot of patients with severe TR are actually very frail and ill. We have a very exciting case coming up next. Um, this is going to be led by Dr. Gomez and his team at the, at the Bell Vittich Hospital uh, in Barcelona in Spain. And this is a very interesting case of a very sick patient uh, post-heart transplant. So it's going to be very exciting. Uh, we're going to discuss this case in detail a little bit after you've watched uh, this case. But in the meantime, I'd like to introduce also uh, Dr. Kiss, who is our chat master for today. Uh, she's an expert in the field. And I encourage you to use the chat box to ask questions as we go along. And we will try to answer these questions as much as we can. So we'll move on now to see uh, the case uh, of Dr. Gomez. Good morning, everybody. We are working in the Hospital of Belviche in Barcelona, and we are planning to put a trick valve system in a heart transplant patient. She's a 67-year-old male. She's a hypertension, diabetes mellitus, and hyperlipidemia as a cardiovascular risk factors. He has a dilated cardiac history with a ischemic cardiomyopathy that uh, suffered a kidney myocardial infarction, and uh, he has uh, made an orthotopic heart transplantation in 1999. Uh, the patient has a cardiac allograft vasculopathy detected by IBUS in control in 211. And we made the change in the treatment to switch to Prograf and Clopidogrel. Other relevant history, he has a severe peripheral vascular uh, extra anatomic iliobifemoral bypass which was made in 211, uh, 17, and uh, a chronic anemia due to colonic angiodysplasia treated with uh, laser. The patient has a severe uh, uh, peripheral vasculopathy, and the patient uh, has, uh, has done an uh, uh, aortic bi axillobifemoral uh, bypass to the left and uh, from the left femoral to the right femoral. So he's made uh, some problems with the access for this uh, procedure. The patient suffered a severe uh, tricuspid regurgitation with a normal uh, right ventricular function. On the uh, next slide, we, pan, we can see the, the flow with the severe uh, tricuspid regurgitation with a dilated vena cava inferior. Next slide, we perform a CT analysis with, uh, to perform the trig valve uh, procedure. And this is the slide on the superior vena cava and the, the measurements of the superior vena cava is the, the patient is uh, the, the, the results made at the uh, 25 uh, millimeters valve is the, the, the size uh, selected for this patient. This is a 16 millimeters in the confluence and he's uh, 57 millimeters of length from the uh, positioning the, the prosthesis. He has a uh, quite uh, different uh, anatomy because the patient suffered a heart transplantation. This is a dilated uh, mid uh, superior vena cava that uh, can be uh, trouble during the implantation that we can see in a few minutes. This is an uh, analysis of the inferior vena cava. This is the measurements on the inferior vena cava. And there are the, the measurements that uh, made uh, a quite uh, limit uh, val uh, value for the inferior vena cava from the transition to the right atrium, 31 millimeters. But this is a small or not, not so big uh, inferior vena cava uh, uh, after the, the suprapathic veins that makes 23. So we selected the 31 millimeters. Uh, because this is device. And this is the angel that made during the diagnostic procedure, but you can see again more uh, angels that you can see in a better uh, way during this procedure. Okay. We start the procedure. We, put the we start the procedure with the vascular access. You make uh, radial access for the pressure uh, in, the, in the aorta arterial right axis. Uh, we have uh, selected the right femoral vein by make the puncture by uh, guide, echo guided puncture because this is a difficulty from the uh, axial by femoral bypass and we have the, the, the access for the, the, for the procedure the right femoral vein and we have two access to uh, left femoral vein 
one for the pictel put in the in the pulmonary artery and the other put in the in the superior vena cava to make the angels and to guide the procedure so we are put uh, extra stiff uh, lander keys wire to the superior vena cava and the subclavian uh, vein to to start the procedure uh, we put two proglide system to close after the procedure the right femoral vein and you make uh, some dilatation to put go with the prosthesis 60 frames dilator uh, was the first is a 24 dilator now okay good feeling we can go ahead with the prosthesis probably we can see in the screen the pictels located in the pulmonary artery and the other pictel located in the superior vena cava and the Landerquist wire put in the subclavian vein is a 25 millimeters device 27 27 because this the skirt the skirt of the valve is in the middle of the belly yeah um, you can see the belly in the next the screen yeah, the, one. the belly is in the in the, in the middle part Bar, yeah the, the the total length is 67 uh, millimeters yeah. and then you have to implant the, the valve the, the, the belly in the uh, uh, up. uh, upper the, the, the right uh, pulmonary artery. Uh -huh. What do you think? Yeah, for me it's okay. Other people uh, agree with we start the, and then start the, the delivery? Part. You have to remove the, the pigtail? Yeah, the, the slowly. Yeah, rot rotate clockwise. clockwise. Very slow. Slowly. Yes. Yeah, no, yes. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Below, mm. below this, okay. Below the, the superior part of, of the, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's perfect. Okay. It's perfect. Little by little. Slowly. Yes. Yeah, the pulmonary artery. See, vale. I think the nominated vein is not occluded. Yeah. And the belly is up, upper the, the right the pulmonary, pulmonary artery. artery. Yeah. Okay. Black. And connector. Okay. Another connector. There's still one. Ah, okay. Yeah, okay. This it's is good. completely released. It's good. I think it's a very good position. Okay. Very good position. Then we can check the 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 the, the patency position. of the of the nominate yeah. vein. Okay. Uh, we can release the the delivery yes, yes. now. No. Yeah, you have to close. Yeah. Rotating, rotating, anterior Anterior Yeah, the, the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Retrieve. Yeah, yeah. You can retrieve. Yes, yes, yes. Retrieve. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Keep the, the wire. wire. Keep the wire. Oh. In place. Okay. Okay. Pull back. Pull back. And now you can rotate anterior clockwise. Pick the last aliado. Close the the delivery. Yeah. Yeah. And to make an angio here to check the the right. patency of the nominate vein. Okay. okay, perfect, perfect. perfect. It's perfect. It was challenging. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I think the position is very good. It was okay. a challenging. It's a challenging case, but uh, okay. and, and the and the nominate vein it's is the risk is not included. Yeah, frame of the valve. We have in the superior vena cava, not uh, arriving to the to the right atrium. No? You put in a higher position due to the dilation yeah. of the superior vena cava. Okay. You are withdrawn the superior cava delivery system and we change for the inferior vena cava device. Okay. Pablo. Feeling tense. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's quite okay. Oops. Okay. Okay. You can make a test here and then just to check the, the position. The now the prosthesis is uh, in the entrance of the atrium, probably. No. Okay. Is an angel now.
Yeah. I think the good the good position is uh, for me is is, is now is in a good position. Yeah. Yeah. Do do do. I, you think about about the marks of the spine. Yeah. And yeah. then I think in this in this, this place, position. Yeah. Ah, you can see the echo is not. Uh, it's quite good position by echo, no? Okay. So we start the delivery. The tendency is to do go up. Yeah. This one the to go also. Up. Yeah. Okay. okay. We are opening the valve, opening the system. We are because making a big up. effort to. You have to hold. To yes. High. It's very high. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Yeah, here is good. Four. Yes. No? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Here. Here. Yeah. Now I think it's better. Yeah. And this is the good position. Yeah. 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 It's, it's nice. It's very nice. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But the position is is perfect. Is the valve? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Very very slowly. Slowly. Very good. Very good. Yes. The echo is point eight centimeters. Okay. Now, okay, I don't make tension now. Eh? Almost at the knot, uh, point. Yeah. So we are completely short with the position. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, I think it's the position. Yeah. Eight millimeter, no? The last measure? Okay. Eight millimeters. Fine, no? Okay. We follow the release. And you want to hold it to, to, to keep the prosthesis in the place. Yeah. Hold the prosthesis. Okay, very good. Very good. Quite stable. Yes, a little bit, a little yeah. bit, a little bit, a little bit. Yeah. A little bit, a little bit higher, but it's not, it's not bad. Mm. Okay. okay, perfect. Completely release. Perfect. Yeah, jump a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, no. Yeah, because the diameter in the, in the figure part is, le is less than... The, 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 the highest part is... The, the diameter is bigger than the lowest part. Yeah, a, li a little more higher. Yeah. Okay. Suprapathic veins are patent. There is a, a small leak. A small leak. Yes. Uh, the position is a little higher. Yeah. Okay. You can withdraw the wire now, no? Retiro la guía.
Okay, we can we can check by echo the the functioning of the valve. The valve. Is the pigtail inside? Sí. One point one centimeters. But I think it's is is not it's good, it's not bad. Then you can check the, the pressure, John. Yeah. Twenty one. Blue is uh, the big wave is twenty. Super open acaba. Twenty big wave and the medium is fifteen. Yeah. Okay. And right is inferior open acaba. You and you. The blue you is you. right atrium. And now it's the inferior vena cava. The pressure okay. in, in the inferior vena cava is, yes, no, is it's lower than the, in the right atrium. I think uh, it's good uh, to to do a, a final angio in the right atrium. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. I think it's perfect. This is the right atrium. This is the right atrium, okay. On yeah, the right. This is perfect because it's a ventricle. Right, right atrium is a B wave 35. It's like a right ventricle. Yeah. yeah. Now the red is inferior vena cava. 22. Yeah. 16. And the B wave is 35. 16. You have the big it's moment yeah. to remove the system and to close the <laughs> the axis, no? We are put two proglides in the right femoral vein, but uh, to, to be sure with the closure, we put a shooter mattress. I will present the follow-up for this patient. Today is 10 months after the trig valve system implantation. The patient has a very good clinical evolution without heart failure, signs or symptoms, and there is no new admission for heart failure. The patient followed the treatment of anticoagulation with thyroid or anticoagulant with a pixaban, and he suffered some episodes of anemia due to the colonic angiodysplasia, so periodic iron therapy was required. Three months after the trig valve implantation, we perform a CT scan with this patient. And you can see now in this slide, the injection from Basilica vein. As you can see, there is a good co-optation. There is a good uh, co-optation of the valves of the inferior vena cava and uh, also to the superior vena cava. This is another view for this uh, injection, as you can see perfectly the correct co-optation of the inferior vena cava and the superior vena cava to avoiding the regularization to the great pains and to avoid some of the problems. So the take home message for this uh, case, transplant heart has a different anatomy from the normal heart. Trick valve system is a very interesting device in these heart transplant patients with atrial or caval shooters. In our particular case, a high implantation of the superior vena cava device to adapt to the anatomy uh, permits to have a good co-optation and uh, no regurgitation at all. That is uh, followed and, uh, for the, uh, in the follow-up. Is a patient has a uh, the most important thing is the patient has a very good clinical follow-up. Thank you for your attention. Juan, thank you. Thank you very much for sharing this extremely interesting case with the trick valve implantation uh, with us. I think it's now time to address some uh, questions uh, that might come up with this uh, technology. And uh, I welcome again Azmi, Edgar and Juan who will provide uh, their experience with that technology in order to answer these questions. Maybe, Azmi, we can start with you um, as a kind of wrap up. Um, can you can you tell us again about this concept of a bicaval implant in patients that present with a severe tricuspid regurgitation? Uh, hi, Prof. Thank you very much uh, for the question. I think you know just to remind ourselves, a uh, trick valve is implanted in the SVC and the IVC. Uh, and the idea is to try to reduce the backflow of blood from the RA to SVC and IVC. And uh, in turn, the RA will ventricularize and it receives more volume from the right ventricle. 
and eventually uh, the right volume, the right ventricle will readapt and will show some evidence of positive reverse remodeling. And I think at some point, you know, the backflow is reduced significantly uh, from the RV to the RA due to a decrease in the coactation gap. And uh, because of this, there's a reduction in congestion, reduction in patient symptoms, and improvement in the functional class NYHA, as I described earlier on. And of course, you know, the overall is actually to minimize the risk of right heart failure. Thank you very much, Azmi. Um, Edgar, in, in particular, can you tell us a little bit about the components of that device, the trick valve device? Sure, Michael. So this is really a um, stand frame made of nitinol. So it's a self-expanding technology that many of you will be familiar with. Um, it is made, the valve itself is made of bovine pericardial leaflets. And uh, this is interesting because this valve is actually comes preloaded and it is also a dry uh, valve technology. So it actually makes the implantation speed a lot faster and also reduces the risk of uh, infection. So I think this is exciting uh, technology and, and be very easy for interventionists to use. Yeah, thank you, Edgar. Asmi, um, people might, might like to know whether the design of the two valves, the one in the superior and the other one in the inferior vena cava, is the design the same of these two valves? Um, I, we have seen the, the case earlier on, and the case actually shows that the SVC and the IVC valves are different uh, in design. And the, the reason why it's different, it is for better securement uh, at the cable area. So the SVC uh, valve has a crown and a belly uh, to secure the position in the SVC. Uh, and it also has a long skirt. Uh, and this is to prevent the perivalvular leak. Uh, in the IVC valve, it has a double funnel shape. Uh, and also a short skirt to prevent uh, hepatic vein occlusion. So they are quite different in terms of the design, mainly you know, to adapt into the uh, cable uh, sizing and position. So let's, let's address some special aspects of that trick valve uh, system. Um, one aspect is, can we use it? Can we use it in patients with TR that have a super large coaptation gap? Juan, what is your answer on that? Yes, uh, I think uh, there is a special indication for this device because this device works uh, outside the valve and doesn't touch the tricuspid leaflets or not depends on the measures of the tricuspid leaflets or the anulus. They work in a inferior and superior vena cava. So this is uh, the, the mechanism to reduce the, the tricuspid regurgitation. Thank you, Juan. Azumi, uh, some people might ask whether you can use that technology in patients who already have a pacemaker lead or a defibrillator leak in their superior vena cava. Is that possible to use? Yeah, as we have seen, the trick valve is actually a heterotrophic device, uh, one in the SVC and another device is in the IVC, which is away from the native tricuspid valve. And I believe that there is a role uh, in trick valve in patients with pacemaker-associated tricuspid regurgitation, and it has been used, you know, in this group of patients, you know, in you know, in in, in the trials. Thank you, um, Juan. In in your case, it was not mentioned in particular, but during the implantation procedure and after the procedure, what is the antithrombotic uh, medication regimen these patients require? Uh, during the implantation, you, you put the patient on anticoagulation. You, you use a uh, non-fractionate heparin with ACT values uh, close to 250. Uh, and this is the, the regime during the procedure. After the procedure, there is, you have to take in, uh, in, in, in mind that this, uh, a prosthesis put in a low pressure system. So we, we prefer to, to, to have the patient with an uh, direct anticoagulation. Thank you very much. Um, some other question. Practically, do we need the two valves or would it potentially be one good enough? Um, ask me. Um, I think in terms of giving uh, the best results, of course, both SVC and the IVC should be treated. Um, and uh, because if only one cable is treated, the backflow uh, will increase in the cable, which was not treated. Um, however, in some circumstances where um, an example, the SVC anatomy is not suitable due to a small diameter or stenotic vein, uh, then an IVC implant should just be a good choice. 
uh, because in terms of reduction in terms of the regurgitation um, and hence you know there is a you know reduction in terms of liver and renal congestion uh, and this will yeah, may improve uh, symptoms for patients as well thank you very much asmi um procedure wise we have seen the case um does it always has to be done under general anesthesia or can it be also done under local anesthesia and in connection to that is do we always need to have a TE on board in order to have the echo visualization Edgar? yeah so you're right uh, if you look at the um, earlier case you can see that actually it's a uh, largely a uh, floral guided and uh, it's um, actually not uh, mandatory to be using TE all the time in fact in the early uh, phase of the study, some of the cases were done with uh, just local anesthesia, sedation, and a thoracic echocardiogram. So it's feasible. I guess the TE initially, in the beginning, uh, actually provides some additional information on the depth of implant as well. So it gives you additional uh, multimodality assessment. So you're, but you're right. Uh, as you get more experience, it's probably possible to do it under local uh, anesthesia, sedation, and, and, uh, and fluoroscopy and transthoracic echo. Thank you very much, Edgar. Um, Juan, you, you nicely showed us the exact implant positioning, in particular for the valve, which is uh, positioned in the superior vena cava. Can you, again, repeat what are the major landmarks to look at to have a proper implantation site? Yes, uh, the landmarks for the superior vena cava are the innominate jugular vein, and the pulmonary artery. So for this reason, you, say, you saw in, this, in the video of the live case that uh, you put a pixel in, in both uh, structures. Uh, the most important thing is the, the belly of the valve of the superior vena cava device has to be upper to the pulmonary vein. And we, we see that the, as, uh, the more superior you put the implant, the less leak we have that is to have to avoid uh, regurgitation uh, to the great veins. And thank you. And can you also repeat for us the landmarks for the inferior uh, uh, valve that is put into the inferior vena cava? For the inferior vena cava is the, the right atrium junction and the suprahepatic veins, because uh, you have to avoid uh, the occlusion of the suprahepatic veins. You can to, to see with the line of the diaphragm, but uh, the transesophageal echocardiography uh, has a very important role in this case to see the, uh, the, the protrusion of the valve into the right atrium. So it's very important to the protrusion has the less as we, uh, the less possible into the right atrium to avoid leaks and to avoid thrombosis into the right atrium. Thank you very much. Um, Azmi, um, in the case that we have a paraprothetic leakage, still contrast going, going by, is there a need for a post dilatation? Is it possible to post dilate the device? And is there a need? We saw it itself expanding, but is it is it good enough self expanding to, to tackle these leakages if, if they occur? Yeah, because um, this is actually a self-expandable valve. Um, so majority time, majority of the time is not necessary to post-dilate them after the implantation. And of course, the other thing that is important is sizing of the valve as well, uh, because we require an accurate sizing, you know, based on CT during the pre-assessment of the IVC and the SVC, you know, in order for us to guide, to guide us to get the right size of the valve. So, you know, in the experience, there is no need to post-dilate the, you know, the valve. Thank you very much. Juan, now, by having now two valves in the superior and inferior vena cava, doesn't that significantly increase the pressure in the right atrium? And what is the consequence of that? Yes, uh, immediately the, uh, it happens because uh, there is a total communication between, between uh, right and, and, and uh, atrial and uh, ventricular. But uh, as uh, Dr. Asmi has presented in the, in, the, in the literature, there are several studies that, uh, that detect that the volumes uh, of left, uh, right ventricle and the right atrial uh, readapts in the, in the future, and there is a decrease on the, uh, decrease on the right atrium pressure 
So it avoids the, the, the regurgitation and decrease the volume in these two cavities. Thank you very much. Finally, Asmi, um, are there patients with a significant TR that needs to be excluded from the trig valve treatment? So are there clear contraindications? Yeah, the uh, selection of patient is, you know, has to be very extensive. Uh, patients who are not suitable for trig valve, uh, patients who have significant pulmonary hypertension, uh, for example, systolic pulmonary pressure of more than 55 <laughs> millimeter mercury. Uh, and in patients with a poor LV function, um, you know, the cutoff LV function is LVA of less than 30%. And also, uh, patients who are not suitable includes patients who have a poor RV function. And it is usually measured by TAPC of more or less than 13 millimeter mercury. And the other thing is, of course, complex congenital structural heart disease are usually not suitable for trig valve. Thank you very much for all of you for providing your answers with all your knowledge that you have with that technology. And I think now it's time to wrap up this symposium. So in conclusion, trig valve interventions is a new treatment option for patients with severe tricuspid regurgitation deemed at high risk for surgery, as we have seen in this patient here from Spain with a transplanted heart. From the early clinical experience, we see that patients have improvement of their New York heart class, their six minute walk test and quality of life and a reduction in their right atrial as well as right ventricular volume at six months follow up. So the confirmation of these results in a larger number of patients and a longer follow up may open a new avenue for patients with severe tricuspid regurgitation and specific clinical situations such as pacemaker patients, very dilated annulus and poor leaflet coaptation where surgery and conventional methods deemed unsuitable. With having said that, again, I would like to thank all contributors uh, with their valuable presentation during that symposium. In particular, I also would like to thank Orbus Niche PNF for sponsoring that symposium with a very interesting and highly important topic. With having said that, I would now give the last word to Edgar. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michael. I hope you've enjoyed this case and this session, but stay on because there are lots of exciting sessions coming along. Thank you very much. Thank you.